Falcoin. All right, so here's the idea. Can I make my own cryptocurrency in less than a day? I know very little about cryptocurrency, so I'll have to actually learn about it and then make it in one day. Alright, so I have one day to build this thing. Right now it's 9 a.m. I'm gonna start with a run so I get some exercise and during that run I'm gonna be like thinking about things that I need to do and like questions that I have about this so that when I get back I can get, kind of start on those questions. And hopefully I'll be a little bit more efficient once I've done some exercise. I don't know. And this is not like a cryptocurrency scam or anything. I'm not going to try to make one and actually release it fully so that you guys can download it or like use it, I mean. Because I'm not trying to make a cryptocurrency to kind of get rich off of it. I'm just trying to make one so that I can learn how it actually works and then share that with you guys so you learn a little bit more maybe, hopefully, about how it works. All right, uh, that's the end of the run. And I figured I would just share with you what I know right now about cryptocurrencies. And this is gonna be embarrassing because it's gonna be so little that I actually know about it. But I think it's interesting for me to share what I know right now so that you can see at the end of the day what I've learned and kind of what I've done with it. As far as I understand it, a cryptocurrency is like an online currency and it's generated through some sort of code in some way. And I think it's based on some form of algorithm that basically decides that like the more valuable it gets, the harder it is to generate more of it. And there's some algorithm that kind of controls that. And uh, so people can mine it. And that's why the more people that mine it, the more well-known and the bigger the actual, actual cryptocurrency gets, the less you'll be able to get from it when you mine, if that makes sense. So yeah, as you can see, there's a lot of gaps in my knowledge right now, but that's kind of what I know right now. The next step will be to kind of learn more and then figure out how it's actually made and what controls it and kind of just the different platforms and like all the different things that I'll need to know. Alright, now it's time for me to do some actual research on this topic. I think I'm going to put in two hours of research and just try to figure out what a cryptocurrency is, how it kind of works and how you create one. And that's going to be my main three questions that I'm going to try to research and try to get an answer to. I'm going to limit it to two hours for now and then I'm going to eat and then I'll come back and we'll see kind of where I'm at knowledge wise. And then hopefully the plan is that I'll be able to get to actually building it after that. So we'll see. So I may have given myself a little bit too short of a deadline. We'll see, I'm gonna have to work with this now and then we'll see if I can make it work. Maybe I can, maybe I can't. It'll be interesting. All right, so if you've watched my videos before, you may know that I sometimes do a little bit of like too ambitious deadlines. I try to push things a little bit harder than I should. And I feel like I may have done that right now. It's right now 2 p.m. and I still haven't finished the research part. All right, so a little update now. It's right now about 5 p.m. and I have a really good understanding now of what cryptocurrencies are and kind of how it works and the whole like process of it. I'm just trying to figure out like how to explain it because I want to explain it in a really good way. So that's the next problem is like, how do I actually explain it in a way that doesn't take up the entire video? I want to try to really explain it very well so that everyone and anyone can pretty much understand it. All right, so here's about five and a half hours of research condensed down into what I think is gonna be about four minutes. So let's go. A cryptocurrency is a decentralized virtual currency. Let me explain. 
Regular currency is what we're used to. What we've used for ages now are bills and coins to represent value. Money is essentially IOUs. I do something and that action is then valued. The value of this action is derived mostly from how difficult what I did was. Right now, most normal currencies have one central location. America is the central location for the US dollar, for instance. Cryptocurrencies do not exist at all in any physical form, which means that we need a way to represent virtual value. With regular currency, this is done with physical bills and coins. Cryptocurrencies use transaction records as proof of value. The way this works is that when I want to transfer money to Fred for building me a house, I send him a payment of my crypto of choice, let's say 10 Calcoin. When I initiate this transaction, the previous transactions of these 10 Calcoins get baked into that transaction to show that these coins exist and that they've been used for transactions in the past, thus providing Fred with some validity that these coins are real and that they work. All transactions are also public. Cryptocurrencies are founded on the base of hash functions, which is a common thing in the computer science world. Essentially, a hash function is a mathematical function that encrypts a message. The way that a hash function works is that you provide it with a message or some sort of input, and it applies some rules and mathematical stuff to this to then produce an encryption of that message as an output or as a result. Essentially, I send the message one and it outputs a two or a five or something else. What it produces depends on the type of hash function, but the same hash function always produces the same output if given the same input. So in cryptocurrency transaction, each and every process pretty much goes through stages of encryption. In the real world, if I pay Fred $10 in cash, then he receives that $10 bill. I can't physically pay that $10 bill to two people simultaneously, but that's not the case with crypto. With crypto, we need some way of validating that I'm not transferring the same 10 coins to two people, Fred and Ted. This is where the term miners come into play. A miner is a person that uses a computer to solve computational puzzles. In the real world, if I get Fred to build me a house, then at the end, the house is the proof of the work that has been put in. Same with these puzzles, they are hard to solve and take time, and that is the work. So solving the puzzle proves that the work has been done, and this is referred to as proof of work. The way to solve them is by sending inputs into a hashing function until the desired output is generated, and this requires millions, if not trillions, of attempts to solve. Every time a transaction is made, a new puzzle gets produced that the miners then can try to solve. The puzzle is based on the input of the past transactions that have been made with these cow coins and if anything has been falsified the miners will see that and they will reject the payment all the previously confirmed proper transactions contribute to validate each new transaction in this way it becomes virtually impossible to trick the system this is also the decentralized part of cryptocurrencies there's no central location or authority governing over it there are miners all over the world and there are people making transactions all over the world in these currencies. Now, once the transaction has been confirmed and the miner has solved the puzzle, then this transaction gets integrated into a block or essentially the outputs of all the hashing function until this point gets hashed into an output that is referred to as a block. That then gets integrated into the chain of blocks that represent the cryptocurrency. This is where the name blockchain comes from. So it's right now 8.30 and pretty much this entire day has gone to just basically researching what cryptocurrency is and how it works. I hope that my animation or my description of it with the whiteboard kind of gave you some clarity on how it works and what it is. And now I'm just feeling like there's no way that I'm going to actually be able to make my own cryptocurrency today. Like it's 8.30 and I have other things that I need to do as well. So this is one of those things that kind of makes me feel a little bit like I failed because I set out the goal to actually do this and like create this thing in one day. But also one of the goals with this video is to share or like show what goes into cryptocurrency and how it works. I wanted to get more into how to actually make one. I don't think I'll have time for that today, unfortunately. 
this is day two on this project and now I'm actually gonna build the cryptocurrency that's what I'm gonna do today and first I have to research how to actually build it of course but now I have a better understanding of how cryptocurrencies work so I know that one of the main things that I'll have to get to know how to build is how to work with hashing functions and I think when I read something that they use something called SHA-256 or SHA-256 which is a very common hashing function or hashing algorithm I think. So that's what I'm gonna try to figure out how to do. So let's get started. All right, so now I've basically created the block class, which is essentially what I did was I found an article on uh, free code camp and that was really good. They went through like how to actually create your own cryptocurrency or your own coin. That's what I've been trying to find someone that actually explains it because I took a look at Bitcoin, the, the source code for Bitcoin. It's a massive repository that just has so many different files in it. That is very difficult for me as like a novice to just go in and read and understand it. But this article is really good and I'll leave that in a link in the description in case you want to check it out. Because essentially I think what my coin will be will be based on that article entirely. Uh, maybe I'll make some changes, I don't know at this point. What I've done now is I've created the block and here you can see that we're calculating the hash. And in order to create the hash of the block, essentially, we're using all of these things. We're using the index. It takes the proof. It takes the previous hash. So the previous hash of the previous, I think, block. And then it also takes some data. I'm not sure exactly what that is, but then, and then it also takes the timestamp. And it takes all of these things. We create, we call that a block of string. And then we basically hash this entire string and then produce an hex digest and that is then our result. This should not be an equal sign and a colon, a semicolon. So essentially this then returns a hash of this entire, like all the data that's in within the block. And then I guess that this block can then be incorporated into the blockchain. But now we're gonna have to go through and actually create all the different things that we need to do for the actual blockchain. All right, so now I think I have a pretty good understanding of this. Essentially, if you think of it like all the information that goes into a block. All right, so here we go. Here we go, have a block. And if you imagine that all of these things like the index number two, the proof number, which is 21, and then the previous hash, and then the transaction, which includes sender and the ID of the sender, I think, recipient, the no name of the recipient, and the amount of cal coins in this case that was transacted or transferred, I mean. <laughs> and then we have the timestamp as well. So it's essentially all of these things go through the hashing function and gets hashed into an encryption of all of this data. And because there's so much information that it takes in, that means that the encryption becomes really safe. And essentially a good way to explain this is by comparing it to password cracking. So if you think of something like Facebook, essentially, they don't actually store your password as plain text, but they encrypt your password and then they store the encryption of your password or basically your password goes through a hashing function and then they store the output of that hashing function. If your password is 123, when you input 123, that goes through a hashing function and then that hashed value gets stored in Facebook's database essentially. So what sometimes happens, some hacker will go in there and attack this website and leak all the different passwords. And what they usually leak is not actually the plain text fast passwords because most sites don't actually store plain text passwords, but they store the encrypted values. So what gets leaked that is actually the encrypted values of the passwords. And so then what happens is that the password crackers that wanna to try to find whatever password it is to whatever site it is, they go through this list of different hash values essentially, and then they try to figure out what inputs could I put into a hashing function 
that will produce the hashed value. And once they find a input that matches an output that they have, then they found a password. And that's why the longer the password is, the harder it is to crack, because essentially, if you just have a password of one character, then you just need to go through all the different symbols that you can find on a keyboard, and then you will have found the password. But if you have the more letters that you combine, or the longer you make the password, the more difficult it is, because the more combinations there will be. And that's why this block thing is really safe, because because it's such a long password essentially that goes into a block that gets hashed that means that in order to crack that it would take so many so many attempts to crack that that we don't have computers that are powerful enough to actually do that right now which means that the system itself becomes really safe what this becomes then this long explanation is that a block is essentially a really, really long password that's been encrypted and produced into a hashing function. That's what I've understood so far. So we're making sure that the previous index of the block does not equal the index of the current block, because if it does, then we're on the wrong index. And we're also checking that the hash of the previous block does not equal the hash of the current block, because then it's not true because then we're basically re-adding a block that we've already added and essentially that's just what this method is for we're just validating different things to make sure that the block that we're about to add is actually true and that we can actually add it to the blockchain all right so now the programming part is done so now let's run it Okay, so this, uh, it actually, it, it works. This is nothing super complex, but it does work. And you can see here that we get like a little bit of information here. Essentially, I'm just printing out what we're putting into the hashing function, or what we're making into a block, essentially. So here you can see we have sender ID, which is zero, the first sender. And then we have recipient name, which is Cal Holden, as you can see here. Cal Holden, quantity, how much of the Cal coins that we're transferring. And then this is a timestamp. Okay, so this whole thing that you see here is what will get baked into a block on the blockchain. All right, so this does now actually work, very basic, but, but it does work and it kind of has the functions that you would need in an actual cryptocurrency. It doesn't have all the stuff that you would need for it to be like recognized as a cryptocurrency according to the article that I'm reading at least, but it does do the basic things that I explained to you with the explanation of how a cryptocurrency works. The next thing in order to actually make this properly work, I would actually have to get some sort of server so that I can create an API and like the coins somewhere like store the information somewhere so that people could make transactions from all over the world and that would require me to actually pay some sort of fee to actually have this running somewhere same as like a website I, as far as I understand it and I don't really feel like doing that right now and so it isn't quite completed but my idea here is that you can look at this code that I have here that's basically based on this other guy's repository for this article I'll actually leave a link to his repository in the description so you can check that out it's super easy to actually look at and the idea with that is that you can look at it and you can kind of get an understanding of how creating this actually works and I also found that just by going through the code and like rewriting it and going through it and looking at what is actually happening in the code that also gave me a way deeper understanding of how cryptocurrencies work so I like I said at the start of this video I won't actually make a cal coin that will be available for people to buy so if you find a cal coin somewhere after this video then it's not me I haven't made it but yeah it was just super interesting to make this video it was something that I've been thinking about for a while just because I like you saw at the start I'm such a novice with cryptocurrencies but I hope that I was able to explain things in a way that you kind of understood a little bit more of how cryptocurrencies work and also how to create one and if you want to dive deeper into it then I would definitely check out his repository I'll leave links to everything that I've used in the description and anyway I just hope that you enjoyed this video and that you got something out of it and I hope I'll see you in the next one